Hello, this is a pure mechanics problem. A baseball is thrown upwards with a velocity of 20 meters per second, and we are to determine the maximum height that the ball can achieve. Obviously, using Newton's law, you can figure out when the velocity will become zero, that's the maximum height. But we want to go a little further. We want to use the energy concept. Well, recall that energy of a system is given by Ke plus Pe plus U. And to get the maximum height, we realize that there should be no friction. There should not be any viscous friction between air and the, and the baseball. In that case, think about it. Whatever the baseball, the energy of the baseball cannot change because from physics you know that energy cannot be created or destroyed and there is no other way in which energy is coming into the system. So therefore, and also in this problem is given that U is constant, so using, suppose we call this location 1 and that location 2, using U1 equals E2 translates to Ke1 plus Pe1. In other words, the total mechanical energy doesn't change as the ball moves up or down. So in the beginning, so obviously the initial kinetic energy is so many kilojoules. And let's say we call this as our datum, z equals zero. So this is zero. And the maximum height, ke2, will be zero because there is no velocity. And pe2 is mg z, z divided by so the whole equation is in the unit of kilojoule and that gives us the maximum height as you can see it becomes z becomes equals m get cancel so it is v1 divided by 2g v1 divided by 2z uh, 2g and square of that, so therefore, I'm sorry, p square over 2g. So, so many meter, which is equals 20 square by 2 times 9.81, which is approximately equals kind of 10, so it's approximately 20 meter. You can accurately calculate that if you want. Well, if you want to check this answer using your knowledge of mechanics, notice that acceleration due to gravity is about 10 meter per second square. So when the ball is thrown at 20 meter per second, it will take about two seconds for the ball to decelerate to a zero velocity. So in two seconds, how far does it go? The ball's velocity goes from 20 to zero. So on the average, the, the speed is 10 meter per second. So two seconds, over uh, 10 meter per second over two seconds that gives us about 20 meter so this answer is quite correct of course the correct answer is not if you use 9.81 uh, for uh, for g then the answer will become 20.39 meter that's the exact answer okay so that tells us the maximum altitude if the ball's the, if the ball comes back to the ground, this is the part B, so now we see in the second part, the ball went up and it came back. So let's call this new state, state E3. So let us write the final state this time as state 3, when the ball has come back at the ground level. And so therefore E3 is the final energy, which is U doesn't change. There is no PE3 because Z equals zero. So therefore, the change in energy delta E is E3 minus E1, which simply becomes the difference in the kinetic energy. And you can show that that will be M by 2000 into V3 square minus V1 square, which is, you can calculate that, 0875 times M where v, v1 is given to be 15 
and V3 is given to be 20. So this is so many kilojoule is a change in kinetic energy. The negative sign means the kinetic energy, sorry, the stored energy of the system decreased. The baseball stored energy decreased as it went up and came down. Well, how do you explain that? How the energy of the system changed? Uh, we haven't covered the concepts yet, but intuitively we can think about, in this case, there must be air resistance, but how does it translate? As the ball goes up, it has to, it loses its energy because it does something, it pushes the air out in front of it. In doing so, whenever you push something from mechanics, you know that any force, when it succeeds in uh, moving the point of application, it does work. So baseball does work against the air as it makes this round trip. As a result, its stored energy goes down a little bit. Uh, and that's the reason the decrease in stored energy. If there is no friction, delta E will be zero and will achieve the maximum height. But in reality, uh, there will be some energy that is lost because of friction. And if you know the velocity in the beginning and end, it's such a simple way to figure out this complicated loss of energy because of friction. But we'll learn more about work and heat transfer in the next module.